Now let us do a numerical problem on two hinged stepping girdle. Now in order to solve this question, you must watch the previous video in which we discussed the various concepts of the two hinged stepping girdle. So the question is, a suspension bridge of span 80 meters and width 6 meter is having two cables stiffened with two hinged girdles. The central dip of the cable is 8 meters. The dead load on the bridge is 5 kN per meter square and the live load is 10 kN per meter square which covers the left half of the span. And determine the shear force and bending moment at 20 meters from the left end. Also determine the maximum tension in the cable. Now in the question we are given that the span of the bridge that is the span of the two hinged girder is 80 meters and the width of the girder is 6 meters. See by width uh, we mean to say that uh, the width of the girder on which the traffic will move it is 6 meters that is the total width of the roads is 6 meters and uh, see it is also given in the question that it is having two cables if you see Lakshman Jhula which is in uh, Rishikesh that suspension bridge it also has two cables at the two ends of the deck so in this question also it has two cables and it is stiffened with two hinged girder. The central dip of the cable is given to be 8 meters. The dead load on the bridge is given to be 5 kN per meter square and the live load is given to be 10 kN per meter square. See now you need to keep one point in mind that no shear force and bending movement is produced due to the self weight or due to the dead load on the bridge. So we don't need to consider the dead load of the bridge. So the only external load which we are going to consider is the live load which is 10 kN per meter square. See now the load is given in 10 kN per meter square. So the load is given in terms of area. So first we will convert in terms of per meter. See the UDL is in is kN per meter. but in the question it is given in terms of per meter square so if you see this calculation so the live load was given to be 10 kN per meter square so if I multiply this 10 into by the width it will be converted into kN per meter see the unit of the live load is given in kN per meter square so if I multiply this unit with meter so 1 meter will get cancelled out with 1 meter so leaving behind kilonewton per meter and which is the unit of the UDL so live load can be converted into UDL if I multiply it with the width and the width of the girder is 6 meters now this total load this total live load will be supported by two cables okay so this total load will be divided into two cables in the question it is given that two cables are there so the load on so the load on one cable will be this divided by 2 so this will come out to be 30 kN per meter we already studied that dead load does not produce any shear force or bending moment Th therefore we don't need to consider this dead load therefore we will just consider this live load that is the external load which we have to consider is the live load whose values will be 10 into 6 this divided by 2 because there are two cables so therefore for one cable it will be divided by 2 so the value will come out to be 30 kN per meter so in the previous video we studied that the two hinged stiffening girder can be broken up into two parts so one part which is which is subjected to only the external loads and one part which is subjected to the equivalent UDL so the first part is your two hinged stiffening girder which is subjected to only the live load in this question I have in this part I have shown the dead load also but you, you don't need to show the dead load because it will not produce any shear force or bending moment the only external load which we have to consider is the live load so it is given in the question that the live load is covering the left half portion of the bridge so on the left half a UDL of 30 kN per meter is acting now if you see this UDL is acting in the downward direction therefore the support reactions due to this external load will act in the upward direction 
so RA and RB are supposed to support reactions due to this external load therefore they will be in the upward direction now if you look at this part in this part the equivalent UDL is acting in the upward direction so the support reactions due to this equivalent UDL will act in the downward direction and we know that whenever a UDL acts throughout this span the support reactions are half of, of the total load so the total load in the upward direction will be UDL into the length suppose the length is L we already know the value of L it is 80 so WEL by 2 WEL by 2 will be the support reactions and they will act in the downward direction because WE is acting in the upward direction now in order to find out the value of WE first of all we will have to convert this UDL into equivalent UDL see WE ko, how do we convert this external load into WE we just convert the load into point load and then divide it by the span it is converted into U, into equivalent to UDL which we already studied in the previous video so if you see this uh, UDL this the unit is 30 kN per meter so if I will multiply it with the span of the UDL it will be converted into point load so total live load will be 30 into span of the UDL is 40 meters so 30 into 40 it will give you 1200 kN so it will be converted into point load now if I divide this point load by the by the total span it will be converted into equivalent UDL so equivalent UDL which will be transmitted to the cable this will be equal to this point load divided by the total span of the girder which will give you 15 kN per meter therefore the value of WE will be 15 kN per meter and now let's find out the value of RA and RB so if you see this diagram this first diagram I have drawn it here separately so now apply all the equilibrium equations so summation of all the vertical forces is equal to zero if you see this diagram total upward force is equal to total downward force so total upward forces RA plus RB this equal to total downward force so convert this UDL into point load so 30 into 40 that is 1200 so suppose this equation is equation number one now let's take the bending moment about a point equal to zero so RA is acting at a point therefore the bending moment due to RA will be zero UDL is acting in the downward direction so if this UDL will act in the downward direction this UDL will produce a clockwise bending moment about A so suppose clockwise we are taking as positive and anti-clockwise we will take as negative so plus first of all convert this UDL into point load so 30 into 40 so this will be converted into point load and this load will act at half of 40 that is 20 so the perpendicular distance of 30 into 40 will be 20 meters from A point so the perpendicular distance is 20 now if you see the next force that is RB RB will produce an anti-clockwise bending moment about A point so for anti-clockwise we are taking as negative so minus force is RB and the distance of RB from A point is 80 so minus 80 into RB this equal to 0 if I solve this equation the value of RB will come out to be 300 kN after putting the value of RB in equation number 1 the value of RA will come out to be 900 kN now we know that the value of capital H that is the horizontal thrust is WE L square upon 8H by putting all the values WE we just found out it is 15 kN per meter L the total length of the girder is 80 meters the H the value of H is given in the question as 8 meters that is the value of dip is given as 8 meters so after calculating these values the value of the horizontal thrust will will come out to be 1500 kilonewton now similarly we can find out the value of the vertical reaction at the supports V which will come out to be WE L by 2 after putting out the values the value of V will come out to be 600 kilonewton therefore we can find out the value of maximum tension which is under root of v square plus h square therefore the value of t max will come out to be 
1615.55 kN. Now we have to find out the bending moment and shear force at a section 20 meters from the left end. See, in the previous video, we derived the formula of a bending moment for the two hinged stiffening girder. So the equation of bending moment at any section is beam moment minus hy. See, beam moment means the movement at that section due to the external loading okay due to the external loading so if you see this diagram if you see this first diagram this is the diagram in which the girder is subjected to the external loading we don't have to consider the dead load so forget the dead load so the only external loading is 30 kN per meter now we have to find out the bending moment at a section 20 meters from A so we have to find out the bending moment at this section see now like we do we can take either the left part of the girder or we can take the right part of the girder so I'm going to take the left part of the section so let us now draw the left part of the section so the left part of the section is this so on the left part R is acting which whose value is 900 kilonewtons and uh, on the left part a UDL of 30 kilonewton per meter is also acting and this length is 20 meters therefore beam moment see beam moment you need to remember beam moment is the moment at the section due to the external loading so this is your section and this is the external loading so the external uh, so the moment will be equal to so we can find out the value of the beam moment as C. We will use the sign convention which we used to take. The sagging bending moment is taken as positive and the hogging bending moment is taken as negative. So this is the left moment, this is the right moment. And this is the left moment, this is the right moment. So now we have taken the left part of the section so we will consider the left part of the section we don't have to see the right moment if you see 900 so 900 will produce a clockwise bending moment about this section so if the left moment is clockwise the bending moment is positive so this will be plus now the force is 900 and the perpendicular distance is 20 so this will be 900 into 20 now this UDL is acting in the downward direction so it will produce an anti-clockwise bending moment about this section and if the left moment is anti-clockwise the bending moment is negative so now first convert this UDL into point load so UDL can be converted into point load by multiplying it with the span so 30 into span 20 and this UDL will act at the center of 20 that is 10 so the perpendicular distance of this 30 into 20 will be 10 from this section so we can find out the value of B moment so the value of B moment will come out to be 12,000 see the calculations has uh, have not been shown here so now we will find out the value of HY we already have calculated the value of H now we will calculate the value of Y the value of Y can be calculated by this formula 4HX upon L square this into L minus X see we are using the equation of the parabola because we know that whenever UDL acts on the cable the shape of the cable is a parabola so therefore we are using the equation of Y as 4HX upon L square into L minus X now we know the value of H we know the value of L therefore for X equal to 20 meters we can find out the value of y so just put x equal to 20 meters put the value of h put the value of the length which is 80 meters we will find out the value of y now put the value of hy in this equation we already have calculated the value of b moment which is 12,000 kilonewton meter so just to subtract hy from 12,000 you can find out the value of the bending moment at x equal to 20 meters from the left end so this calculation has not been shown in the notes but you can do the calculation and you can find out the value of the bending moment by putting all the values in this equation now let us find out the shear force at a distance of x equal to 20 meters from the left end 
we, in the previous video we we found out the equation for shear force at any section for a two hinge stepping girder so the equation was v equal to vx minus h tan theta and v was the shear force due to the external loads now in order to find out the value of theta if you remember uh, in the video of the explanation of cable subjected to UDL we found out this equation T max T cos theta equal to H so if I put T max here this equation will also be valid so T max cos theta equal to H after, uh, after putting the values in this equation we can find out the value of theta which will come out to be 21.80 degrees so h we know theta we have found out and the value of shear force due to the external loads see again we have to find out the value of shear force at the section so uh, either we can take the left part of the section or we can take the right part of the section in this question i have taken the left part of the section so shear force at any section is simply equal to the summation of all the forces either to the left or to the right so left may there are two forces one is 900 kilonewton and the second one is UDL so we will use this sign convention this type of shear force is positive and this type of shear force is negative so this is your left force this is your right force this is your left force and this is your right force we have taken the left portion so we will see only the left forces and we will compare these forces with these sign conventions so if you see this force 900 this force is acting in the upward direction and if the left force is in the upward direction the shear force is positive so it will be plus 900 the second force is a UDL so convert this into force so 30 into the span that is 30 into 20 meters and this will act in the downward direction and if the left force is downward the shear force is negative so this is minus 30 into 20 so this is your shear force due to the external loads that is Vx. So just put all the values in this equation. We can find out the value of shear force at x equal to 20 meters as minus 300 kilonewtons.